All right, so you just saw us pull the motor out, and uh, now we are, I will roll this thing over for you so you can see the bottom end even more clearly. Then we'll uh, roll it back over this way and then start taking it apart. And uh, I am going to show you everything and show you why some of your comments are, or some of your ideas are wrong. Uh, and it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't get me down. Don't care if uh, you're haters, not haters, lovers, doesn't matter. I am actually just showing you stuff because I want you to uh, go through the critical thinking process of trying to figure things out and understand how things really work. So I got this insane, stupid desire to try to help people understand stuff. Don't know why. But anyways, uh, let's roll this over. Yeah. Because it's a water jacketed engine. <laughs> All right. So let's try taking the rest of this bolt off. So you can see here, I'm actually pretty happy that it didn't do, uh, didn't window everything because normally. See, these sections of the block, if you don't already know this, this section here, this section, this, every one of these sections, if you look on the back side here, they're pocketed out because it is specifically made for when rods break, usually one or two rods at most. When rods break, they will, uh, they, it's called a window. So these windows will break out and it's easier to repair that window than it is a solid pan. Um, so I only have this damage right here as far as like uh, significant. Oh, there's a, we're going to have to get this piece of material out of here because I won't be able to turn the motor over with that piece of material stuck in the gear drive. But that's just because it uh, rolled it upside down. It fell in there. Okay. That's not something that was there and made everything happen. <laughs> but uh, let's see. Grab this. Um, as you can see here, I mean, it is like crazy. I mean, look at this. Look at this journal right here. That is, how is that even possible? And I, I mean, not rolling it over. It feels like it's got a little bit of a dinger over there. This one here. I mean, that journal looks like brand new. This journal looks like brand new. There is no bearing getting caught, no oil problem. The bearing didn't catch and then twist the rod and then break everything all apart. Did not happen that way. Uh, I mean, all these, I mean, this one is a little more damaged, but it's fine on the backside. So it obviously got hit and pinched in between. Um, but anyway, it's enough on the bearings because uh, anybody can see that that is perfectly good. Um, and really weird because, I mean, how does that rod, these rods break like that and not just totally destroy everything. So I'll show you another real quick thing here. Um, I'm going to just pull this. This uh, You want to see this, that the pin end of the rod right there just moves all nice and free. Let's we'll see if we can. Uh, it's got rings in it, so they're always a little bit tight to move. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's hard to, hard to see the, the video of that, but I mean, I'm just pushing that piston up and down. And I'll go over that discussion too. Of let's see, yeah, it's just hard to get in there. So I'm really hoping that my crankshaft is not. And it's got a little dinger out of there, dinger out of there. Uh, they can save this crankshaft. It's a five thousand dollar crankshaft, so obviously don't want that to be broke. Um, uh, material just chips everywhere. And uh, obviously, gonna have to replace some sleeves, but uh, all the sleeves. But actually, it's uh, all things said and done, it's not too, not too nasty. Um, and I'll show you all these pistons as we take them out. So I'm gonna roll this back over, and we'll just uh, start taking this apart.
All right, so in the grand scheme of things, this looks pretty good. Uh, good rocker, good rocker, 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 rocker. Only knocked off one rocker, so for that kind of uh, destruction, it knocked this rocker arm off. So with pistons and uh, valves all going down at the same time, uh, you can see all the valve train is here. Okay, Even the valve is still in there. There's no drop valves. It did not drop a valve. It did not have any valve train problem. Uh, this is absolutely the result of the piston coming up, coming up out of control after the broken rod pushed it up there. Okay. You can see that here's a little piece of the, uh, this is, goes there. Uh, but the lifters still all look good, which is nice. This one will obviously be hurt because that rocker arm uh, stopped intake. Um, all of these all look good. No problems, no problems, no problems, no problems. So that's sweet. I think we'll take these heads off, and now we'll uh, be able to get the pistons out, and we can look at those things. Actually, I'll, I can also let you see down the intake port. That's fine. There's the old valve, nice. There's the old valve, nice. There's the old valve, nice. This is even the one that broke the rocker arm. Okay. No problem with it. Obviously, it's going to be bent, but. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Exhaust. You can't really see in there. I have to get a, it'll get a light. Uh, let's see here. All right, got the camera now. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Let's go over to the other side. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. Valve is nice. So, didn't have a valve train problem. Didn't have a uh, valve droppage problem. All right, so you just saw me. I just took the one rocker arm off just because it was already broke right there. You see that it didn't, it hadn't even knocked off or done anything bad to my retainer keeper, which is nice there, but it really won't matter because it's still bad. And these uh, Manton push rods, stout, because <laughs> it broke that rocker arm and that is not bent. So I'll throw that down in there for just a second. And... You primarily can see that uh, I can still roll this over. Pretty interesting. So I'm going to start taking off the rock arms. I actually had to stop here because I'll show you this because if you knew how happy I am right now <laughs> that every one of these lifters came out of the bore without being broken after knocking all the rods out of this thing. And even this one that uh, broke the rocker arm on it usually will destroy that lifter, but uh, it's not. So I'm super happy. So got them all out. Uh, no damage. Well, damage, but I mean. Uh, a lot of times if these things get all beat up and swelled out, then I got to cut them off or try to figure out how to get them out. It's such a mother. But it's uh, when they come out like this, this is like super nice.
All right, so here is the magic moment, or one of the magic moments, because we're still going to take the, I'll flip it upside down here in a second for you, but this is seeing what is going on in piston land. I'm still happy about the valve train because the valve train not being all knocked off of this and the lifters coming out of the hole is such a big deal. You have no idea. So super happy about that. And that is remarkably, now they're turned obviously because they're not connected to anything, but that is remarkably good. Now I will have uh, Alan jump under here and push up, grab a hammer or something, a handle and we'll push the piston rod up. I think you need something longer than that, it's pretty far. We'll get this gasket out of the way. Gaskets look awesome, obviously. Mainly because they're not leaning on this. One of the, actually, one of the little comments that I saw was that we probably, you know, overboosted it. Forty-five because forty-five pounds might have overboosted it. Forty-five pounds is not overboosting this. Uh, if you watch the piston delete video, it was fifty-five pounds that hurt the piston. And uh, after I get that all sorted out. Um, I mean, this is a, I'll be running this engine at uh, 70 pounds of boost on lean or not hard. Obviously, it doesn't have to go that all the time because it goes awful fast for what it is. And, oh, turn it off, get out of there. Come on, there we go. So, uh, it did not over boost. But if you look at the data log, I show you the data log and all of the numbers. Uh, not sure where I want to put this. Let's wait, wait, put it right here. But you can go ahead and wipe that off if you like. So, excellent. You can push out any one of them you can get at if you want. All right. You got something with a long enough handle to do that? Yes, sir. Sure. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Yeah, keep going. Now, that is pretty ugly. <laughs> uh man. So, the piston, you know, got sent up. So, it hit the head up here. Hit the head up here. Obviously, it's all uh, beat up. But now, I'll show you some stuff later because it's interesting. Piston pin is still moving and free. There's no, nothing is tune up related here of being burned up, knocked out. This is all from the piston uh, getting sent up into the cylinder head, getting sent up into the cylinder head, free of the connecting rod. Yeah, the rod probably might have broke off and hit it once or twice up here. Uh, this is indication of it hitting the uh, uh, counterweight, so it must have gone down at one point in time and then got sent back up. Obviously, all foobarred up. Okay, somebody, I'm going to tell you on uh, Wednesday, next Wednesday, like uh, August the 3rd, somebody's going to get this. Keep posting. Yeah, we can go ahead and knock that other one out.
there's the other one now another thing uh, uh it's I'll, I'll show you the cylinder bore here now this is a cylinder bore grab my light shiny except for where it's all foobarred up down at the bottom from the rods flailing around same with here just normal where there's no scuffing there's no don't it, there's no uh pistons getting locked up in the bores which is if you if you do the the, the thinking side of it I would tell you that that's why i showed you the graph the dyno log acceleration the rpm curve was still climbing if it was locking itself up wouldn't it go backwards first and then blow up because this thing was still climbing and then just went poof so something to think about but the cylinder bores looking good pistons are coming out the rings are not locked up which they're in also that would not be an instantaneous thing that would be something that would be progressive so you should have seen the engine go backwards slow down this thing was on the fastest pass yet and let go so we'll get these other ones out and then i'll go over there and grab the other side head off well same thing on this side everything looks really for what happened there really good no burn down none of the tune-up issues the uh if you look at the cylinder heads i'm Super happy here too. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Obviously, this is this oil from taking it apart, all right? Don't uh, get all freaked out. Because right. you can see it's just running down fresh right now. It's good from that angle. Looks good. Looks good, looks good, looks good, looks good. Even the one that really whack the piston right here this one's definitely going to be bent but it's not broke probably a lot of them are going to be bent but they're not broke that's a big deal now the uh, other thing that's making me significantly happy is crankshaft turns over for what happened right there and what's all in there that is really good which means my my camshaft tunnel is not too foobarred up my main tunnel is not too foobarred up we'll roll this upside down the block is not too foobarred up Oh, I had one guy that uh, said, check your rollerized thrust. I didn't, haven't even checked this yet. I'm telling you it's right. <laughs> so let, let, look at it real quick. Yep. That's about, that's about five to seven thousand. So that's perfect. Oh, let's take a little bit closer look at it. I think this is realistically as far as I'm going to take it apart here on the video. And then we'll just go over some other questions. But uh, you can see here, I mean, just, just amazing. Uh, the damage all at the same time of no damage. It's just amazing. Something hit that part really hard right there. Obviously rod piece, but right in my plug hole. This is the only... Only part of a window, which is like significantly good. Not a big deal. Bottom of the bores are uh, obviously beat up because it's got parts flying around in there. But uh, for anybody that's actually broken rods before, you know that this is really minimal damage. And crankshaft's looking good. 
Black's looking good. Um, unless this has got a, a hidden crack in it somewhere. So I'll have to uh, obviously send this out, have this done. But the lock is looking good and savable. Um, so that's not going to be a super big deal. Camshaft is going to be savable. That thing is, those camshafts, I mean, cost me 2500 bucks. So the, uh, they look good. That looks good. Oops, sorry. Looks all right. That rod journal, that rod journal. They're just turned over by hand. I mean, it ain't no big deal. Right there. There. Yeah. A little bit of stuff flying around, getting wedged up and stuff. So, in the grand scheme of life, uh, that is making me as happy as it could be for what's going on. Um, so, let's go over this thing here. Check out these. Still free, still free. The piston pin, everything is, a, I mean, it's nice. That one that got hit really hard right there, so that one's not gonna move. Even this one moves. That one's a little tight. That one's not gonna move because it got hit by a bunch of stuff. Free, free. Minimal, minimal cylinder head damage, which makes me super freaking happy. Super freaking happy. And uh, I am going to toot my own horn here because that, this whole engine package, my whole SMX deal is a bad mother trucker. To take that kind of abuse and to have that little amount of damage is really something else. I mean, to take pistons out like this with the rods connected to them, and have the heads look like this. Only one bro broken rocker arm shaft. And a savable block. Savable crank, cam, and the rest of it. Awesome. Alright, I'm going to show you some math that is going to freak you out. And uh, to explain some stuff here too. So, one of the comments I've gotten quite often actually. Is that the engine hydraulic breaking all of the cylinders at the same time, okay? So, I'll just show you this on, in one part, the first part, which is, that's impossible. It is literally impossible because look at any V8 engine you want to in the world. At any given time, any spot in the rotation, there's at least four cylinders that have a valve open, which means you can't hydraulic a cylinder if there's an intake valve open or an exhaust valve open. It's, there's nothing to hydraulic. Okay, so impossible to do all eight cylinders at the same time. Impossible. Okay, so now let's go over to whiteboard and I'll show you the math on how it's impossible to hydraulic in these applications. I'm not talking top fuel. I'm talking something uh, giving you all the math on the injectors and everything on this application or, and or like a pro mod application. Okay, a, meth or a uh, methanol application. So let's go over to whiteboard. Now, like I said, I had this insane desire to help people understand stuff that they're not understanding. Because honestly, I want you guys to be better customers, better engine build, or better engine guys, understand what's going on. Uh, better customers for me, better customers for other people. If you're an engine builder and you wanna use this video, send money. No, I'm just kidding, it's okay. But you should, because I'm helping you out, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Anyways, uh, just try and get people more educated. Now. Uh, 8,500 RPM. If we divide that, that is 8,500 revolutions per minute. That means in one minute, that piston goes up and down uh, 8,500 times in one minute. So, divided by 60, by 60, you're at 141 times a second. Okay? So, 141 times a second, that piston goes up and down. Now, one of those times, so you got to divide that by two, because 
half of those times the piston is going up in the exhaust stroke okay you can't hydraulic it with it in an exhaust stroke so the intake valve is not even open so it can't hydraulic from fuel oh by the way you can't hydraulic this motor on water because there is no water there there's no water in the head gasket and if you know uh water if you have a blown head gasket it always blows compression into the water jacket not the other way around so you can't do that all right so now we are at uh 70.5 so 70.5 times a second, the piston is going up and down, okay? What that means is that if we divide that out into uh, how long is that piston, uh, how long is that piston even per revolution, per time of coming around is 0 0.014. So 0 0.014 seconds, is it even possible to spray fuel into the cylinder, okay? So it's going up and down on an intake stroke 70 times a second. So it's not even possible for that to be spraying fuel per revolution at 0 0.014, all right? So I have a thousand pounds per hour of injector okay. on it. Now I have a uh, thousand pounds per hour of fuel going in per cylinder. So uh, if we convert that to CC per minute, a thousand pounds per hour equals 10,500 CCs, keyword CCs per minute. Okay. So 10,500 CCs per minute is 1,000, or I'm sorry, 175 cc's per second. Now, we know that the piston goes up and down 70 times per second, and or it has availability to spray fuel into the combustion chamber for 0 0.014 second. So if we times 175 by 0 0.014, we end up with 2.36. So during each specific cycle, there's only 2.36 cc's of fuel that can be sprayed into the cylinder. So per uh, piston, we're gonna say cycle because that's every time it goes up and down in an intake stroke. So 2.36 cc's per every time it goes up, my combustion chamber Flat top piston is 73 cc's. Impossible to hydraulic. That is the math. Came back over here because I want to show this to you real quick after I just showed you all the math on why that's not possible to lock up a running engine. Okay, it is totally possible if the engine is not running, uh, but especially at those RPM, it is not possible to lock that up. Uh, I'd have to figure it out at idle, but I really didn't care because what I showed you was the data log on the previous video. Uh, I showed you data logs. I showed you everything. I showed you everything. So it's just interesting to see, just thinking, figuring stuff out, learn how to, uh, you know, do stuff. But anyways, what I, I wanted to show you here was you really got to look at these rods. Okay. So just once again, you have to see, this is all the carnage. Okay. I did. We showed you, or uh, we had comments on where I modified this rod. If I modified the rod, would it not have broken somewhere right there? When obviously it broke all the way back here? Or how about uh, uh, this one here? Here it is. Mo that was the modification. That was the only modification we had to do. Not broken anywhere around that. Broken away from it. This is like... Uh, splintered wood if you ask me um, you can see this is the bucket of parts we took out of it look at all the small pieces that's a oil pan bolt but sorry look at all that's part of my sleeve uh, small pieces that just broke away look at this those are pieces of shards broken away all right, these main bolts didn't break or strip out. We talked about that earlier. 
Here, this is still turning out. Uh, caps are all broke off, blowed off. So, long story short here. Look, look at the, the break. That is, this is material. Material, bad batch, uh, way exceeding whatever these, this material is made for, designed for. Um, design, maybe a little bit of machine work. Uh, there are some pieces here where, like here's a piece of the beam. Um, you can see that this whole side of the beam, this is one side. The whole other side is gone. It's just gone. So, uh, you know, there's some areas here where, you know, uh, it broke right at the tangent of the machine line. Maybe that's a little bit. Maybe it's a little bit of these, this black anodizing. There's a lot of things here that I don't know that I'd like to have answers for. But uh, I can tell you that when parts are moving and something's broken like that, this piston was not hydraulic. I showed you the math. It's not stuck in the bore. It didn't lock up the rings. It didn't do any of that stuff. And you have that kind of break. And it's still moving. Because if it hydraulic or the tune-up was so bad, it bent the pin and all this other stuff. Why is this moving? You see what I'm getting at? So that's just good logical thinking. Uh, this thing, obviously, in my humble opinion, has broken because material um, and a maybe something with the anodizing i heard have a lot of people giving me a lot of good information there uh i am having metallurgy done on it we'll find out and uh at least there um maybe so a little bit maybe of machining i don't know maybe a little bit of design but absolutely no doubt that is a material problem for this horsepower this thing makes over you know four thousand horsepower uh we will be making 70 pounds of boost um and he's the last more than 45 pounds boost. so i just was giving you a whole bunch of information to help you guys to always think about it and figure out stuff and figure out uh, and understand how things work inside big horsepower engines thank you much i'm steve morris have a great day mm -hmm.